Hello, and welcome to episode 102. And uh, for this video, I've come way up to um, Shropshire. I'm at a lake called Merrington Fishery, which is uh, right by Shrewsbury. Never been here before, but Lee Fish is here. Yeah, we'll have a few times, not that many really, <laughs> but a few. Yeah, and uh, Lee invited me to um, have a go at this lake where he fishes, so I thought, why not? I like fishing new venues all the time. Phone. Yeah. And so, here we are, here for 48 hours. Yep. And uh, looking forward to it. I like that. I always enjoy coming somewhere new. Um, for those of you who have got good memories, back in episode 99, when I was um, fishing at the festival, if you can remember, it was quite a tough weekend and there was only me and one other person on that lake who actually caught any fish. Well, Lee was that one other person. <laughs> so, you can catch going. fish. Yeah, yeah, can. <laughs> so, so hopefully, hopefully you can catch some fish for this video. Let's try, let's try anyway, hopefully uh, catch a few. So. Hopefully you'll uh, get a couple of 20s to show us. That would be nice wouldn't it Chris? Yeah. That would be real nice. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, right, still got a load of setting up to do yet so I'm going to crack on with that. So till summer uh, carpy happens, let's, let's go, go fishing. fishing. <laughs> right then guys, I mean Lee swim. With his first fish of the session. Second. Oh yeah, second, sorry, yeah. He had one uh, before I uh, got here. But it was a bit bad though, didn't you say? Yeah, when it's pets. I don't know if it's spawning or what, but... I'll let Luke Bailey know anyway and told him to explain to him. This is staying right. Nice. The old line's putting right down at the margins, isn't it? Yeah, it's down here by me, uh, have a rod. I certainly don't want to come up at the moment. I haven't seen the lady yet. Oh. A nice bend in the rod. What test curve are your rods? Uh, three and a quarter. That's got a good bend on it for a for three and a quarter, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, here it is. I think it's a, sort of flashing in the wall. Oh yeah, I can just about see it. Oh, he yeah, looks right. all right. Like, another scar on it as well, though. Yeah, I was just going to say he's got a bit of a mark on his flank, hasn't he? Yeah. It is a different, totally different fish this time. Bit of carp care, yeah, I've got some put that fish. right. Look at that, that's a nasty wound, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yes. In she goes. Lovely jovely. Well in. Happy days. That ain't going. With Lee and that fish you just see him playing. 20 pound bang on, put on a wafter, 60 yards out, just a few freebies put around it. Nice fish. Yeah. yeah apart from that little scar on its other side. It's, it's, <laughs> that little. <laughs> <laughs> You've been generous there, Chris. Yeah. First blood. Yep. Now your turn. <laughs> I've got to get me rod though, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Let's get her back. Right then guys, back with Lee again. Into his second fish. <laughs> just been uh, spotting out a bit of a bait, haven't you? And, uh, yeah, I just put, uh, only put a couple over each rod. I didn't bring the rods in or anything like that. Just spotted over the top of them, really. And uh, within 10 minutes, this has gone off. Well, even that, was it? Five minutes? Well, probably that, yeah, yeah. Probably five minutes. Don't worry about the 
stories we have this you know, cock metal. Right, that's one thing I like about bag loads. I like using bag loads, but when they stop banging your tip eye, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen fish lost because of it before. Come right round it. Right then guys, in order to try and keep this blog as short as possible for a change, we'll uh, see you when uh, the fish is on the bank. Hopefully. <laughs> right then guys, here's that fish we just see Lee playing. 21.14. It was the other rod this time, weren't it Chris? Yeah. Yeah, the other rod this time, so obviously all in the area. Eating the bait, loving it. Just after you've been spotting? Yeah. So they're getting on the bait? So that's two now, Chris. <laughs> that's yeah. next. Yeah. You were there before me, though. <laughs> that's fair enough. I'll accept that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get her back. Goes. Thought you were going in as well then. <laughs> Nearly. Right then guys, all right, I'm all set up and fishing now. A bit of a slow setup as I like to do, I like to take me time, but as you can see, my rods are out. Uh, I'll quickly show you where I'm fishing to. I had a bit of a lead around, there's a few bits of gravel out there, and the rest of the lake is quite clean, clay bottom. But if you can just make out in the distance, there is a pylon just there. That pointy thing is a pylon. That is me marker for me left hand rod. And I'm just then just aiming at this big sort of round tree for me right hand rod. There's only two rods allowed here at this fishery. Uh, both rods are fishing at exactly 12 wraps out. So uh, no real effort needed to... Um, cast out. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna put some bait out now. I've already had a few liners on both my rods but it may just have been the line settling. But I'm gonna put a bit of spot out now, a bit of particle mix and uh, hopefully get the fish grubbing around in my area. There we go. Ready? Right then guys, back with Lee again. And he's got his fourth fish, well, third of the blog. Common, what was it again? 11.14. 11.14. Yeah, stunning. Stunning little common. Yeah, nice one, isn't it? Yeah, with right hand rod. Like I say, 60 yards out. Just a load of freebies, a couple of spots, and bang, there she is. I guess they don't like my spot mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice one. Cheers mate, thank you. Let's get her back. 
Uh, morning guys. So, uh, sleep, uh, had a good night's sleep for me. Uh, Lee had one in the night, a uh, small mid double, wasn't it? Yeah, between 13 and 14, I thought. You right? But, um, uh, yeah, but let's thought I'd uh, do a bit of a breakfast update at this fishery. They, um, yummy. They do breakfast, there's a little on site cafe, and they deliver to your swim. Look at that. Full English breakfast. Yeah, that's brown Not sausage, bacon, eggs, beans. Not bad. Not bad. Six pounds. Yeah. Half to tack on a plate. <laughs> well, yeah, if you're kind of American fishery, you don't even need to bring food. No. Right then, guys. When I got here yesterday, as I was said in the intro um i got stuck in traffic yesterday on the way uh so my journey time took a lot longer than it should have done so by the time i got here yesterday i basically just had time to sort of have a little bit of a lead around and then just sort of basically chuck my rods out and get all my gear up and everything to, before it got dark so um uh, in the on-site cafe that they got here, there's a map of the lake, and there's a they've got like little um sort of little comments in every swim of like the bailiff's like tips and advice of where to uh, fish and whatnot, and uh, somewhere out in front of me, just to the right, there's meant to be like a gravel bar or sort of a plateau. So um, what I'm going to do in a little bit is get me marker rod out and have a Led around, wind me rods in first, obviously, and then um, have a look for the bar that's out there somewhere. I think it's somewhere in the region of where I'm already fishing on my left hand rod, sort of aiming for this pylon over here. But what I want to do is actually look for like the base of that bar and and uh, fish at the bottom of it. So that's what I'm going to do in a bit. Right. Um, do a bit more organisation actually sort of get fishing properly rather than just sort of chuck in randomly. Right then guys, update time. Um, so I've just spent a bit of time uh, with my marker rod having a look for the um, the gravel bar that I've seen on the map in the cafe here. When I cast out yesterday, when I just had a lead around I clipped up both rods to 12 rod lengths and um, found the bar that, that was on the map and uh, it's, at, it's at 11 and a half rod lengths on the right hand rod so um, so I must have been fishing just on the bar or maybe just the other side of it at 12 rod lengths so uh, maybe that's why I haven't had a bite yet so maybe a mirror rigs weren't presented properly sort of maybe halfway down a bar or something but yeah I found the bottom of it now and it's so I was only sort of half a rod length out and then uh, not long ago a couple of lads walked round um, had a chat asked how am I doing and uh, regulars here and they told me of a spot on, on my left hand rod only they said oh it's between about four or five rod lengths out they said there's a little plateau that comes up so I just had a look for that. It's literally an underarm swing. Found it. It's at four and but four and two third rod lengths out. So um, I'll put my left hand rod on that. He said it's a good spot. He said he had a 29 pound fish off of that plateau. It's not much of a plateau. I had a lead round the rest of it with a marker, and it's all six foot six foot deep. Pulled up onto that plateau, and it's five foot deep. So. Um, only slightly shallower, but I'll uh, put a bit of bait out now with the spot on both their marks and then um, get the rods back out. And hopefully I can start catching some fish like Lee is.
Hi right, guys, um, obviously I'm still waiting for me first fish but um, we're with Lee at the moment who's had um, five fish now um, we didn't see his fish last night because he didn't want to wake me up because I was snoring my head off <laughs> but um, he's just about to do a rechuck and he's um, going to show us his rigs he's caught his five fish on so far Right, basically all it is is a wafter, banoffee soaked with a tiger nut goo I've got a size 6 crank with a hook bead and a micro ring swivel which uh, hopefully will sit nicely just off the bed and I've got a 15 inch coated hook length braid about 7-8 inches long that's connected to a safe zone leader with 3 ounce lead pretty basic and simple but it's working nice I'll, I'll put, little, put the bait on the back around so I can have a little zoom into it I think nice just a little micro swivel in it and just kept on place with a little hook bead yeah yeah it seems to be working well I've got a little bit of putty there just to weight down a little bit more as well on the lake bed and yes girls he is married so <laughs> <laughs> a nice one nice one cheers guys I have an evening update and uh, not a lot has really happened today for um, Mimi or Lee and, uh, it's been quite quiet to be fair um, not long ago there was a guy a bit further down the bank he had a couple of fish out in um, quick succession and, um, I thought I'd wander on down there while we were all in first of course and uh, went in and had a chat and he just to see some what bait he was on you know as I've never been here before I'm not sure if I, what bait works what type of bait and um, he was showing me some of the local bait that they sell in the shop here and it was sort of a nutty kind of nutty and a fish meal sort of mix really showed me some of the other baits that he uses but, but the main gist of what I got he was showing me of all the baits were um, basically a dark coloured bait not sort of browns, dark browns, light browns so I've come back to me swim and um, since I've had a bit of a sort out and a tidy up of what I actually carry fishing most of my baits are sort of high vis, pastel colours, light coloured baits and the only thing I've really got of that sort of brown or dark coloured anymore is um, the mainline hybrid. So I'm going to give that a go, just put a little, little wafter on. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's really the only sort of colour wise. The bait I've got that sort of matches anywhere near what Matey had, so I'm going to give that a go. Hopefully, fortunes might uh, turn around. It's been a bit quiet today. Um, one other thing that's quite significant is though, in uh, about the last half hour, there's been a real temperature drop as well. You can see, I've got my hoodie on now, and uh, yeah, it's been quite. Even though there's been a bit of a breeze blowing today. It's still been quite warm. And, uh, yeah, in the last half hour there's been a proper temperature drop. He, he, when I come back from chatting to Nate, he was in his bed. But, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that was going to turn things around, a bit of a temperature drop, who knows. So we're just the lights just starting to fade a little, sort of. So 
so these casts now to give me rods back out would be me cast the night. I won't do any more recasts now unless there's actually any fish action. out there and hope for some fishy action. Oh, morning guys. Oh, now into the last day. Uh, unfortunately it's been another fishless night from me and Lee. Not even a single bleep. Oh, it's looking like me, uh, me bad run of sessions is, uh, going to continue into this one. Oh, there's some, uh, people opposite us. I woke up probably about an hour ago and I, I swear I could hear one of them people's alarms opposite going off. sure because I slipped right through but everything's soaking wet this morning you can probably hear a bit of the rain hitting the shelter above my head in a minute. My plan was, if I hadn't caught anything through the night, I was going to try zigs today, but I think with this weather we got this morning, I don't think zigs would be the way to go. Maybe might try later if it uh, brightens up and, and the rain stops. I already know the depth of water out there from when I uh, was using the marker rod the other day to find that um, gravel bar that's out there. It's about six foot deep around uh, in front of me, apart from on the plateau and bars. But, yeah, a bit of a wet and miserable morning this morning. Didn't even bring me wet weather gear with me because we've had such nice weather over the last few weeks. Didn't think it was needed. Right. I'm going to crack on and have some breakfast. And uh, pray to the fishing gods. Something will happen today. 
I'm, I am staying here till um, sort of late afternoon, early evening time. So still got a four days fishing ahead of me yet. Right, let's have me breakfast. Hi right, guys, I've decided to go with back to uh, my original plan of uh, zigging for the day. After I filmed the other piece, the rain stopped about half an hour later and although the sun has gone behind a cloud again at this moment, the sun has come out again now, so um, I've decided to uh, stick with me plan of going on to zigs. So, I already know the water out the out in front of me is a uh, six foot deep from leading around using the marker rod the other day. So if I can untangle this from my rod, I'm gonna go with a three foot and four foot zig. So quite simply all I'm go with is a bit of black foam, size ten Choddy hook. I like to use choddy hooks on my zigs because I think it keeps the gate nice and open for being able to hook the fish easier when you're zigging. It's a three foot of hook length, anti tangle boom off the um, lead clip system, uh, lightish lead, I think that's a one and a half ounce out of my tackle box, and then just a very short bit of anti tangle tubing. You don't really need tubing for zigging, but I just like a short length just for anti-tangle purposes. That's it, very simple. And now just for the cast, I'll sandwich the hook in between two bits of uh, dissolvable rig foam. And then I'm going to do the other rod at four foot deep. So I'm going to be sort of fishing mid-water and just slightly upper in mid-water as well. Alright, that's the plan. Hopefully something can happen on the zigs. Right hey guys, uh, coming to the end of the session now. Lee has finished, he's off over in a minute. I've got a few hours left to go. And, um, well, what can I say? My uh, bad form continues really. Uh, lucky I had Lee in this video to uh, be the saviour of uh, saving it from a complete blank video. I'll help you out any time, Chris, mate. Don't you worry about it. Cheers, mate. <laughs> but, um, yeah, un unfortunately, yeah, it seems like my uh, bad form's continuing. Um, when we got here on Friday, there were fish showing massively up here, wasn't there? Yeah, all down this end. And uh, literally, as soon as I put my rods out, it just died up this end. You had those five on Friday, didn't you? Yeah. And then after that, it just died, didn't it? Yeah, I think they all went up to the other end, didn't they? Basically, yeah, followed the wind, so... Basically, what's been happening, there's four pegs right at the very end, what, 15, 16, 17, 18, and the guys on them pegs have just been rinsing it, especially the guy on 15, in it? Yeah, 15 and 17. Yeah, they've just been absolutely rinsing it down there. Yeah. And unfortunately, the lake has been practically a full house, so moving swims is out of the question, isn't yeah. it? So, yeah, it's been well busy. But... No, it's still been good fun. It's always good coming somewhere new, seeing different, different lakes, different sites, and it's all your fish. So <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Next time, Chris, come down here. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to. It's another lake I'm going to have to come back to now to set the blank right. That's right. But anyway, if you've got this far watching, uh, thanks a lot. I think this is going to be a short video because there hasn't been a massive amount of action. Uh, my next blog is going to be next week hopefully if I can um, get onto a lake called Hawcott Lake which is right next to Fairford I'm gonna um, be planning on fishing Hawcott Lake during the Fairford Air Tattoo weekend so hopefully my next blog might have a few aeroplanes in it as well Brucey bonus and then my next blog after that is gonna be my YouTube bloggers match and then the next blog after that we're gonna see Lee again when we're planning on going to Farlow's yep. for a, a two-day session I wanted to get back there because I've got a blank there to set straight, hopefully. But yeah, it's not really much else to say about this session, is there? So, uh, it started off really well, didn't it? Yeah, it started off well for you, and then literally, as soon as our rods went out, it just died up its end, didn't it? And yeah. Literally, I think the fish have been completely down the other end of the lake, haven't they? And, yeah. But oh well, us fishing. At least I'm not the only one that's blanking. There's 
the, there's a there's been what half a dozen people on the other side of the lake. Yep. And yeah. as far as I'm aware, not one single person over there has caught anything, have they? No, no. So the people before them were here for four days and they didn't have a single thing, so it's not been fishing well really. I suppose I was a bit lucky but there's always no sign there, so Yeah. Right then. Uh, thanks for putting fish in this video. No problem. And I'll see you again in a three weeks time. Yeah, yeah See if we can right. smash that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right then, thanks for watching this video.